Hello there and welcome. I'm Gabriella Rosa, author of three books on natural fertility with the fourth being published at the end of the year. I'm a fertility specialist and naturopathic practitioner. I'm also the founder and director of naturalfertilitybreakthrough.com and of course the host of the seven day fertility challenge. I am totally honored to lead the greatest team of expert fertility practitioners who take care of patients from all over the world through workshops, phone and Skype consultations. And together, our mission is to hold your hand from beginning to baby, no matter how we get there. And we empower couples just like you to take control of your health and reclaim your fertility, giving you the best possible chance of taking home the healthiest possible baby. Over the last almost 20 years now, I have devoted myself to understanding what gets in the way of couples conceiving and keeping a healthy pregnancy to term and I have helped thousands of couples overcome infertility and miscarriage even when other treatments have failed. And today I'm here to share with you the top five mission critical mistakes that couples make on their fertility journey. It's a really interesting story actually how um, I've boiled down all mistakes that couples make into five easy categories to understand. Um, there aren't just five mistakes, but really, you know, what we've done is um, I've I surveyed our database of about 50,000 people. We got a thousand or so replies in terms of, you know, an answer to the question of what are the top three mistakes you've made on your fertility journey that you wish you had been told about uh, and you could have avoided? And that's basically, um, out of all of those replies, we've condensed it all down, we've categorized them, we've put it into, into an order that uh, literally I'm going to share with you tonight from you know, the top, the, 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 I'm going to start actually on the fifth mistake and I'm going to go all the way through to the number one mistake. And this is basically in order of occurrence on, on people's kind of radar on the fertility journey and uh, with some distinctions, of course, of my experience in the last 20 years. And what's been really interesting about this is that I, I actually thought I was quite fascinated. I, I learned something doing this exercise, actually. Um, I, I learned something new every day, but this was really quite an interesting thing. I thought, oh, you know, I, I was pretty clear about the mistakes that couples make on the fertility journey. And, and this taught me um, a couple of extra things in terms of distinctions of how people experience um, this journey. That was quite interesting and I'm really keen to share that with you. So let's get started and let's get into it. One of the things that I will say in terms of these mistakes, and I'll, I'll be making mention to this throughout you know, the, the process that we, um, that we will go through in this presentation, but um, there are lots of little things that I think sometimes get overlooked, you know, on the fertility journey. And I think that it's important to acknowledge that, yes, it is a, an incredible, heart-wrenching, sometimes, you know, heart-pounding, heartache, you know, everything related to heart comes to mind when we're talking about difficulty conceiving and keeping a healthy pregnancy to term. You know, it's such a, an emotional topic and it really does impact both partners on, on the journey. Of course, you know, not everyone going through the journey and the challenge of infertility is in a, in a partnership at, at, uh, at a particular point. You know, some people choose to do solo reproduction and some people um, are in various different types of partnerships when they decide to, um, to embark on the journey of bringing a baby into the world and and this really does apply you know across the board I, I've I went through it in great detail really wanting to gather the the distinctions around you know what people really experience through this process so let me share it with you and uh, and I'll be more than happy to have further discussions about it and and as I find new, even newer distinctions around this um, I'll be happy to share it so the very first mistake that people make is not surprisingly the stress of stress of stress you know and uh and and this really applies on many different levels you know when people talk about stress 
on the fertility journey. They talk about, you know, the fact that the journey itself is stressful, but they're also talking about, you know, the 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 challenge or the the stress about stressing and the fact that, you know, if I'm over, if I'm stressing out, I'm going to decrease my chances of conception. And even though, you know, to a certain extent that is the case, you know, the body very much didn't evolve past what it pretty much used to do 10,000 years ago when, you know, our main kind of stress or was running away from a saber-toothed tiger and, and when the body uh, experiences stress on that level, it still does very much, you know, what it did back then and that is to shut down the organs and systems that are not essential for warding off immediate danger. So things like digestion, you know, why would you want to digest your food when you're about to become food? Uh, why would you want, you know, to worry about the little bug inside of you immunity when the the big one running after you is about to make you dinner and finally you know you wouldn't even dream of having a baby or wanting to have a baby if you or, or procreating if you're about to become dinner so you know all of those factors are still very much at play in the body's biochemistry today and so the key aspect is understanding that yes all those stress does have an impact uh, stressing about stressing is definitely not going to be useful but also you know, the, the, the impact that stress has on the body creates further stress. And, and there is also the component of people wanting to understand how to deal better with stress, how to de-stress and how to reactivate their fertility as a result of that. So, you know, there are many components or I guess facets to the word stress and, and many ways in which it actually gets um, applied on this particular journey but the critical mistake that people make is really to not find ways not only to um, shift their mindset and um, change the way in which they're perceiving the situation which sometimes is definitely um, difficult but definitely possible and of course you know understanding tools and strategies that are health promoting that are going to optimize fertility because sometimes people use um, stress reduction techniques that are less than healthy and that are definitely not going to create the optimum fertile, fertile environment that we are looking for in terms of being able to have a baby. For example, if your stress release is alcohol, that's definitely going to decrease your chances of conception. If you smoke and, you know, obviously you smoke more when you're, when you're stressed, that's absolutely, you know, smoking has been shown to decrease a woman's fertile uh, reproductive life by up to five years, you know, bringing on early menopause. And in men, to drastically decrease the um, ability of the body to actually make sperm and increase the risk of testicular failure. So it really is something, you know, and as alcohol has very similar effects on the quality of the egg and sperm. And so these... Um, not so ideal ways of dealing and coping with stress are definitely going to be negatively impacting. And I think that one of the biggest things that people talked about on the survey was very much about not knowing and not uh, understanding, I guess, what are some useful, effective, fast ways of dealing with the, the difficulties that the fertility journey can bring. So one of the you know, key aspects here is to figure out, okay, what are the conscious decisions that we can make in terms of being able to implement stress reduction on the journey and uh, addressing and optimizing it so that we're not stressing about stressing and that we are actually improving the body's biochemistry along the way as well. So that's critical mistake number five. And, and actually, you know, it's, it's also interesting, and I will mention that uh, when I first um, talked about this, I thought that I would condense all of the different mistakes that people made into, you know, the top 10 mistakes. And as I was going through it and I was going through the survey, yeah, there were lots of kind of things, variations on themes that people were talking about. And, you know, it really boiled down to five things. You know, there weren't 10, ten things. Um, many of the things that were there were actually variation on themes. And so that's why it didn't end up being 10 mistakes. It ended up being five mistakes because that really is, you know, the, the number of categories that came up in the process. Um, the second um, category is, uh, is very much team play. You know, it's, it's interesting because I've always talked about and I, and I talk about um, the fact that fertility is a team sport and have talked about that for a very long time. 
However, there are so many mistakes that couples make around partners. You know, um, it's about not understanding and getting both partners on board. You know, that's that's one of the mistakes that people talk about all the time. Um, the fact that often men are excluded, you know, for to a certain extent from the fertility journey and, and that are not involved or engaged in the way that they could be to optimise their chances. You know, what we've talked about in terms of uh, things that couples or partners can do to improve their own fertility, therefore to improve a couple's fertility is one of the most critical mistakes and I find that you know I mean obviously um, the way in which the whole system is set up is uh, is conducive to that kind of lack of, of connection or complete and utter disconnection so to speak in terms of men and women being par- a par- you know partners and, and a partnership when it comes to making a baby because if you think about it you know if, if a couple goes through IVF all of the attention and focus is pretty much put on the woman and the things that she needs to do throughout the whole, you know, 30 days that a cycle or longer that a cycle is going on. The man comes in on a critical day, gives in his little deposit and off he goes, you know, and not many questions are asked in terms of, you know, how are you feeling? What are your stress levels like? What are the things that, what are you doing? You know, are you improving your health? Are you exercising? Are you eating well? You know, all of which, all of those little factors can make a, such a huge difference on the journey overall. So um, it's important to understand, and, and I think that one of the critical mistakes that people make, in particularly early on in the journey, is not actually understanding how critical, how absolute mission critical that team sport that is fertility and how important it is for couples to both engage to the same level in order to optimize their fertility and their health throughout this process. It really is quite a critical um, situation that if I think that if people really truly realized the, the, the deep impact that both male and female um, I guess um, effort and input has to this situation. It's very overlooked and it's actually being very, very clear throughout the survey. You know, it's being super clear that um, not only men get kind of shunned to the corner, but they also are not educated to the level that they need to be. And I think, you know, I find often that men sometimes also disconnect because they're told to do things and they don't understand why. And that's one of the things that I'm really big on, you know, when with our patients in the clinic is, is really to educate why it is that you need to do something and, and how and, you know, what's, what, is, what is the difference that that's going to make? Because that partnership and engaging both partners and enhancing communication and improving the way in which both partners are working together on this journey is absolutely critical. So the mistake that people make is not actually doing that. It's the opposite of that. Um, that is definitely critical mistake number four. Critical mistake number three is really quite fascinating <laughs> in, my, in my view. Um, it boils down to a really paradoxical little thing that is you know you don't know what you don't know and there are lots you know really as I as I did this process of of getting to the bottom of you know there there is lack of knowledge on so many different levels of of this conversation you know when it comes to the the challenges that couples experience on the fertility journey you know there's um there is uh, not knowing what questions to ask so these are the biggest kind of like top seven things that came up uh under that banner of lack of of knowledge and the first thing is that couples you know feel like they made a mistake on what questions to ask when it counted most because they just didn't know what they didn't know you know so not knowing how best to um, proceed you know in terms of what questions to ask and the things to to flag on their journey that was a, a very big thing um, the, the second thing in terms of that is the importance of being proactive on the fertility journey so many people just did not and do not realize how this is such an important step you know, um, how this, in fact, how this step alone can mean the difference between having a baby or not when things aren't as easily as initially anticipated. You know, I spoke to a couple this week who joined our program 
who the husband he was he was really he was so wanting of knowledge and understanding and what was really interesting was that he basically said you know I really want to do this program because I, up until now I didn't realize that there were so many things that could be getting in the way and I didn't realize that you know I just thought that things were going to happen you know and that basically I didn't really need to do that much about it and um, and that is a, is a really interesting kind of telling comment you know often what happens is and, and this is a one a huge mistake which is kind of like a subheader of this lack of knowledge um, under this situation is that men in particular and I think men make this mistake because you know it's almost like women we know that our, our fertile window is finite you know, men have this uh, idea that, and, and we're actually scientifically sh being shown more and more that males' fertility also declines quite extensively throughout their reproductive, well, throughout their actually uh, physical lives. And, you know, that over 40, the amount of sperm fragmentation, you know, DNA fragmentation and sperm um, health decreases quite significantly but what happens is that up until now men are pretty much told you know you can conceive in your 90s and everything is going to be fine and you don't need to worry about it too much um, so often men end up delaying the whole idea of seeking help and looking for help and engaging in help thinking that oh don't worry darling we're just going to get pregnant where the truth is if you've been trying for two years or more it is highly unlikely that you're just going to get pregnant by doing nothing, right? Or by do just continuing to do the things that you have been doing up until now. And that is a absolute critical, and I mean critical mistake that couples make. I see this mistake actually cost people the chances of having their baby altogether in my practice. You know, I see people who basically have left it way too late because they were had, took such a blasé attitude towards you know actually looking for help and seeking help and actually engaging in help simply because they didn't know it was this lack of knowledge issue you know they just didn't know that it was going to be an issue you know they didn't know what they didn't know um, the third thing that I often see under this same umbrella is you know what's getting in the way of conception and keeping a pregnancy to term is often unknown it's that typical unexplained infertility diagnosis you know like whenever I hear that literally my skin crawls because I just think it's the laziest of diagnoses it's not actually looking for an answer or looking for what actually is getting in the way it's just going oh look it's too hard let's just put it in an unexplained box um, I really truly don't believe there is such a thing you know so that's something that we very look work very hard and and really focus on in our practice to make sure that we don't come up with you know unexplained infertility that we understand what are the minor factors that are getting in the way and you know on that note one of the biggest I guess lack of knowledge or issues that people have is not knowing and not understanding First, what are minor factors? And two, how to best address them. You know, and I talk about this in my practice to people that I talk to who are interested in, on the Natural Fertility Breakthrough Program or who I'm just having conversations with all the time, which is this whole understanding of this whole aspect of, you know, most people understand what their minor factors are. You know, you understand, like, you, especially if, if couples have completed our, our comprehensive fertility health appraisal, it's a 47-page document, right, of understanding exactly where are the areas that aren't working and what is it that we need to do about it. So most people, by the time they've gone through that entire process, they understand what is getting in the way and what their minor factors are. What they don't know, and this is typically and, and majorly the reason as to why they're coming to us, is how to address them. Because the, the different components, different, different um, compounded minor factors can really have very different effects on how the body operates, how the fertility journey turns out altogether. So knowing and understanding how to best address minor factors is really such an important part. And I think that there's a huge lack of knowledge for couples on that regard. And, you know, also errors in thinking and using, utilizing the wrong approaches f to address the things that are, that are getting in the way and that are important. You know, often what ends up happening is that, you know, if they just go to a, a traditional doctor, most couples will just be told, 
go to IVF, it's a numbers game, uh, IVF doesn't work after several cycles or after several, yeah, after several tries and then people are just told, look, just do donor egg, you know, and again, it's kind of like just, it, it's almost a cop out, it's like, okay, well, let's not worry or focus on what needs to happen to improve the chances, let's just kind of like put the band-aid on and, and go, you know, I talked to a couple today actually in my practice, who told me that they wanted to join my program because they went to see a fertility specialist last week or, or recently and um, and they basically were told, they were asked, you know, a little bit about their story, what, what was going on with them. Um, the, the practitioner asked the, the husband, so, you know, do you drink alcohol? Um, and when they said, no, look, you know, we, we haven't been drinking alcohol, we've decided that, you know, we want to do the best that we can to improve our chances. So she literally turns around and tells them to, um, to relax and, you know, just have a beer, just enjoy yourself, just relax. And I'm just going, oh my God. Um, you know, if that's the kind of, like I almost, I actually said, you know, is that the kind of advice that will give them, you know, more IVF cycles to do? You know, is that, is that a self, you know, perpetuating kind of um, bit of advice there? Which is, you know, it's, it's, it's sad and really, I think, completely tragic that a health care practitioner would be giving that kind of advice in this kind of situation. And I totally get that, again, we're dealing with, you know, critical mistake number five, which is about stress and the fact that we do need to reduce stress, but there are so many better ways of dealing with that that are going to actually be conducive to improving and optimizing a couple's chances of conception than to basically go and drink alcohol, <laughs> right? So don't do that. That's a big mistake. Um, so, and I guess a little kind of thing number five under this um, lack of, of knowledge umbrella is that people don't really know how to take charge of their fertility. You know, they don't understand the difference and the efficacy of different approaches and not all alternative approaches are made equal. You know, like, for example, sometimes I see people kind of go, oh, I've got to do something to improve my fertility and they go and start taking essential oils or, you know, doing goodness knows what and like you know i hear all sorts of things trust me um but you know the, the types of things that people begin to will start to do um is really not as effective or, or comprehensive as other methods for example right i mean if we if we kind of put this in context um to go and, and drink essential oils versus a, applying a methodical approach to uncovering and understanding the aspects that are getting in the way of conception, like the seven, you know, the seven uh, steps of, fer of the fertile method or the, s the 11 pillars of fertility, is going to be extremely different you know, to basically just taking some homeopathy or doing some essential oils. Right? So there's lots of different variation there. And I, and I think to a huge extent, people don't really understand the difference. They think that because they're doing something, because they're taking some supplements or because they're you know, doing something, that they're doing everything. And that is a huge, huge mistake that people make. Um, also, people don't understand the true impact of not taking care and optimizing their fertility and their health. There is literally study after study after study on PubMed, which is basically a scientific uh, journal resource, and it's PubMed.com, talking about the impact of diet and infertility, the impact of environmental factors and chemicals and radiation and, you know, you name it, on fertility, egg and sperm quality, and the impact that doing these generally negatively health and, of course, fertility impacting behaviors actually have on the average time to pregnancy uh, for a couple it's it's dramatic and what happens is that this is still to this day being completely overlooked on on the journey as a whole right so it's something that absolutely needs to be improved needs to be looked at needs to be optimized and um and again it comes back to that whole aspect also of the impact of the partner's contribution there was a study that was published a couple of years ago for example talking about the impact of eating junk food and male sperm health 
right? So we often overlook, you know, most, most men overlook that as something that because they don't know. And again, it comes back to that whole cycle of not knowing what you don't know, right? And, and the conflicting and, and confusing advice and the overwhelming nature of the amount of conflicting and incomplete advice that is out there. So it's important to get clarity on a path and approach and follow through so that there is as much understanding and as much knowledge as possible and I think that an educational component to any fertility treatment is essential because the more you understand the better able you are to advocate for yourself right and that is crucial it is absolutely crucial I mean that's absolutely what we teach our patients to do for themselves on their fertility journey and we do it with them so you know I, I for me there is nothing worse than lack of knowledge right well actually there is and I'll explain a little bit more in critical mistake number one but it kind of comes back to what the underpinning uh, you know mistake that is happening right here which is that lack of knowledge right and so lack of understanding of the reproductive cycle is another huge reason that keeps couples stuck uh, not only the male cycle but you know the things that I've mentioned before the fact that fertility f even for men is not infinite uh, infinite sorry is that you know there is a finite aspect to it to a certain extent and uh, and you know really getting people to understand that and have that clarity is going to be quite crucial on the grand scheme of things and then of course fully understanding the female reproductive cycle you know one of the things that I understand uh, from recently having done one of my little programs the understanding the conception cycle program which uh, you know some of you here or actually I think pretty much <laughs> every single one of you <laughs> um, here are doing is um, is that whole aspect of not having understood not having known in the beginning of the process how to really truly understand what is going on in your hormonal cycle um, in, in as far as conception timing is concerned as far as how to understand your body and your body the, the, the changes that are going on within your body but also when there are hormonal imbalances how to fix it rather than suppress it when they occur you know there is huge lack of understanding and lack of knowledge in this area and I know because so many of you have told me that you've learned so much from that program and you know it makes me so happy to know that you know you now are armed with such important and vital information about how to optimize your chances of taking home you know, a healthy baby so that is truly you know, uh, a blessing as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, and yeah, lack of knowledge is one of the hugest, hugest areas to address and to look at. So critical mistake number uh, two, actually, is, and, and this was a big one for couples, and you can imagine because it's actually number two, so it's very, very high up on the list, is wasted resources, you know, and resources in, in the uh, form of time, uh, because, you know, sometimes, you know, people continuing to do the same thing over and over years and years at a time without a result and continue to think that it will all turn out okay. You know, as I mentioned before, sometimes couples find us two to ten years before they actually engage our services and that is crazy to me. I had a lady last year who joined our program who had been following me for ten years and you know, when I, when I asked her, why 10 years, you know, like, why? She was like, ah, oh, I just didn't know. And it's like, oh my God. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's really about looking at not wasting time, you know, stop doing the same thing, expecting a, a different result, really focus on doing something that's actually going to optimize your chances. And, you know, so many of my patients, like the average time for such a long time used to be like, two years you know people used to um, know about us and our services and what we did for two years before they actually did anything and uh, luckily through education you know we've been able to shortcut that because it makes such a difference you know two years on a fertility journey can truly make the difference or mean the difference between having a baby and not having a baby you know so don't waste time that's one of the most critical mistakes that literally practically almost every second survey was talking about you know, f the, the, the waste of time 
that they the 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 coming to to doing something earlier and you know the fact that it would have saved so much so many thousands of dollars and such infinite heartache you know that was that's why actually wasting precious resources is together with money because that was the other thing people talking about the fact that they had spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars um, to, you know, going and, and paying for failed cycle, failed IVF cycle after fa failed IVF cycle to eventually end up with no result and figure out that, okay, well, look, I really have to do something different about this. And you don't even have to go far. You know, I've talked about one of uh, couples who basically had you know, 20, over 20 failed IVF cycles. And I mean, if you think about it, and they did it all, it wasn't budget IVF, they were actually doing it all as private cycles, you know, paying for each one as they went to the tune of about 10 grand each, right, $10,000. And uh, you can imagine, you know, after 20 cycles, you practically have a house in that, right? So it's it's incredible. And, and, you know, after they came to us, they did our program, they basically ended up conceiving naturally. And this is what it comes down to. Sometimes it's about actually just getting in there, taking action, doing what it takes, and it makes such a huge difference. But the key is not to delay, not to waste time, because that can truly mean the difference between having a baby and not having a baby. And, you know, there's so much heartache that's not actually necessary. So um, that's really quite a, 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 an important, you know, th this is a very, very critical mistake. And it's interesting, you know, my husband... I asked him the question um, recently. I said to him, you know, if you didn't know me and if you had a wife and you were having fertility difficulties and you, you wanted to do something and if she came to you and said, look, you know, I want to do this natural fertility program, um, what would you have said? You know, like, would you, have, would you do it? And my husband is an accountant, right? <laughs> so uh, I, I thought I would mention that because this was his, his reply. He goes... Oh my God, yes, it would have saved me so much money <laughs> rather than going through IVF, you know, and I was like, oh my God, that is all you think about? Like, what about all of these other benefits, you know, like, because we're constantly having people tell us how it completely transforms their life for the better and, you know, they feel so much better, they feel like the best version of themselves, there's so many wonderful benefits and I tell him about all of those and he goes, oh, it would have saved me so much money not having to go through IVF and I'm like... Oh my God, <laughs> that's what men think about, right? So don't waste the money, just do the work. That, is, that makes a huge, huge difference. And the final thing, you know, and I think that this is definitely, definitely critical mistake number one that I think so many of you will actually relate to, drum roll for critical mistake number one, <laughs> and that is regret. You know, people often talk about the regret of not giving it their all, not taking charge of their situation and, you know, doing what it took and making the decisions rather than letting decisions be made for them due to lack of decision making and um, also not doing the work, you know, to leave no stone unturned. I think that's one of the, and people tell me this literally all the time and in the survey it was so crystal clear and I was very interested, actually, in all of that. And there were lots of, you know, mistakes or, I guess, regrets around rushing into IVF. Um, the fact that IVF was not the only option. The fact that, you know, there were uh, things that needed to be done or could have been done to improve the odds of IVF, having wasted and spent so much money. And again, you know, please don't take this the wrong way. Like, I am completely impartial of how our patients get pregnant and take home babies. You know, in some instances, we are the very first to actually tell them, look, you actually need IVF. We, what we need to do is we need to prepare you so that you can go straight to IVF because that's going to be your very best possible way or chance of taking home a healthy baby. And so I have nothing against IVF. I have nothing against the fact that I, I truly actually believe that it's a, a, a godsend technology for some couples who would have never being able to conceive otherwise. But what does happen and what is happening in this day and age is that unfortunately, IVF is being overused. You know, I feel like couples are literally being herded down this path like cows rather than being treated and looked at properly in, the, in a greater context of the things that are actually getting in the way 
of conception and the ability to take home a healthy baby. You know, so the regret, you know, I know that every couple I talk to, one of the things that they say is that they would, have n- they would never want to look back on their journey and feel like they could have done more, they should have done more, they had the opportunity and they didn't. You know, they all feel like they want to actually look back on their journey and know that they've given it their all, that they've done their best, that if it didn't happen, it wasn't because they didn't put in the, the work or the effort, but they just know that they've, they've done everything that they possibly could. That is a, a place or a, 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 an empowered position to come, you know, to be in or to come from, because at least then you can make the decision at any point that you choose to draw the line if you don't want to continue. You know, so for some people, the IVF um, is not something that they would want to engage with. For other people, donor egg or donor sperm or donor embryo or surrogacy, you know, like those are, for, for some people, that's where they will draw the line at natural conception, right? Others will draw the line at IVF. Others will draw the line at donor egg and so on, right? So the key aspect is to know that wherever you choose to draw your line, that you've left no stone unturned up until that point, right? Because that is the way that you won't ever have to live with regret. The regret of sitting on your porch when you're 90, sitting on your rocking chair, looking back in your life and going, if only I had. And that, if there is one thing that I want to save you from, is that kind of regret, right? Is that feeling of regret, So just do your best, do everything that you possibly can because that is what's going to give you the best possible result on your journey to parenthood, you know, on your journey to creating the healthy baby of your dreams. And, you know, it's important to realize that truly when it comes to fertility, there is no kind of like shortcut you know, you've got to give it your all. You've got to do it for as long as it takes. You know, like if you're going up this mountain and you get halfway through and, you know, there is no other way, you've got to actually go through. What are you going to do? You're going to stop and sit there and wait for something to happen? No, you're just going to keep walking, right? Because you know that that's how you're going to get to the other side. Or if you've walked already kilometers and you want to go back, well, you've actually got to turn around and you've got to walk back. You can't expect that you're just going to be picked up where you are and you're going to magically appear elsewhere so you've got to give it your all and you've got to do it for as long as it takes you know and making that decision the decisions are the choices along the way you know for example like this whole thing of like if you decided okay i'm tired sure you can rest but you can't decide that you're just going to sit there on the ice for the next two weeks because you will die right so it's about making the decisions that are going to work for you and that you can actually get behind and you can support and for some you know we are absolutely the solution for some couples we will absolutely be the team that will be able to help you and hold your hand through that process right and and that really is what it comes down to now you see the key aspect and for me um what i truly truly want you know is is to see this information creating a movement you know i want it to make real change in the way that couples are taken care of are addressed on this journey you know i truly believe there is so much power in taking charge in doing what it takes in finding your strength and i want that difference in people's lives to be my legacy, what I'll be remembered for in generations to come. I don't want the adulation or the glory. I want the results. I want to help people become the very best version of themselves through what I can s- literally, uh, you know, can sometimes be the most soul searching and gut wrenching period of a person's life. It's really that simple that is why I show up to do what I do every single day. You know, there's really no other reason. Yeah, sure, there are some wonderful things that happen as a result of that, and I get to experience and be part of some incredible, incredible stories. But really, that level of tenacity and discipline and focus and determination that a human can muster to transform their results, wow, for me, that is where it's at, 
right? And, and I love to be in that energy, in that power. And I want to show you exactly how to be in that place. So I, I know that change can only come from doing what it takes, right? And, and really, sometimes a fresh new beginning is what it's required and what it's all about. So some of you may want the opportunity to have my team on your side, holding your hand from beginning to baby. If that's you and you know who you are, what you need to do is you just need to basically go ahead and fill out the questionnaire. And you will find the questionnaire at bit.ly, so that's bit.ly forward slash fertility starts here. And you do need to use a capital F, capital F, S and a capital H. Um, that is, let's ignore that so you can see it nicely. Um, and that is essentially where you go, you complete the questionnaire and one of my clinical assistants will give you a call to have a chat and see if we can help. And if we can help, great and if we can't at least we'll give you some more understanding of what you can do and, and where you can move to and and how to navigate you know your path on this journey so today I want to leave you with the reminder that only you can do your part only you can develop your determination only you can find your strength and take charge of your journey and write your own story it is only in doing your part that the heavens will come to your aid. And even though the outcome is not always up to you, the deep, core, action-focused desire to make things happen cannot come from anyone or anywhere else other than you. In the words of the favorite, favorite quote of my entire lifetime in the literally entire world <laughs> is by William Hutchinson Murray, uh, on the Scottish Himalayan expedition, until one is committed, there is hesitancy. The chance to draw back, always in effectiveness. Concerning all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves to. All sorts of things occur to help those who would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favour all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance which no man could have dreamt would come his way. I do. I believe in you. I believe in your abilities. And I truly believe you are whole and perfect and beautiful just as you are right now. And if you never end up having a baby or another one, none of these facts will ever change. However, I still truly believe that you must do your part so that you will never have to live with the regret or have to look back and wish that you did or you could or you should. You will simply know. And even if our paths literally never cross again, I do want you to know that you are loved more than you will ever know. And I wish if nothing else, I have awakened in you this very simple truth and I wish you the very very best on your fertility journey and please do keep me posted nothing makes me happier than to see your successes and and to see you create your dream and in the meantime remember to keep the faith do what it takes and enjoy the ride and until next time bye for now